Welcome. Hello, this is Dr. Stephen West, the Superintendent of Schools here in Winona Area Public Schools, and thanks for attending or welcome or watching Making the Grade. Um, it feels like it's been a while since I've been on Making the Grade, and I'm really excited to have Stephanie Gill Gilland. Mm -hmm. See, it's a goofy looking <laughs> name, Stephanie. And uh, before we even get into the question, Stephanie, uh, I wanted to ask you, you actually came to our school board meeting. Uh, must have been, seems in like, April, yeah, it two seems weeks like, ago. Yep. You see, folks, I, I'm struggling already. <laughs> it seems like it was a long time ago, but it was actually just this past April mm -hmm. 23rd, or was it the first board it meeting? It was the first board meeting. First yeah. board meeting. And uh, we were having you and highlighted the spotlight on success and some of those things. So tell me, before we even get started, how, how did you feel um, regarding the, the meeting with the board? Was that a stressful thing? Was it exciting? It, it was different for me because okay. I'm not public speaking. Okay. I sing Twinkle Twinkle to okay. my little, little one ones. and two year olds yeah. in class, yeah. and that's about it, my extent. Yeah. But you know, I felt very welcomed and comfort. Like as soon as okay. I walked in, I could tell it was a relaxed, knowledgeable board, but didn't make me feel nervous at all. So once we got going, well, I heard. Fine. Well, I had heard that you were a bit nervous, but you looked <laughs> great. You were doing your thing, and I was like, oh, she's, she's hanging there pretty good. So well done. It was just fine. All right, so let's get on to the business at hand. So how long have you worked in the district, and, and, and what capacity currently? What are you doing, and have you been doing that job entirely? Nope, so I've been with the district for nine years. When okay. I first came to WAPS, I came in as an early childhood teacher. Okay, before we go UCLA. on, is mm -hmm. it WAPS or is it uh -oh. WAPS? Winona Area Public Schools, let's just do that. We don't no, have to no, 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 because I hear <laughs> no. people, and so you shouldn't say WAPS because that's a negative connotation. Well, I don't and know. I go, is it WAPS? What do you want it to be? I know, I'm the boss, right? Uh, right? Okay, so. <laughs> I don't know. We'll go with WAPS. Right okay, now. WAPS. Okay, go there ahead. There you go. So, so I nine years in WAPS. Yeah, nine years here with you guys. Uh, first, I came as early childhood teacher to ECFE, okay. so I was there for three years. And, and what is that for listeners? Early childhood family education. Okay. So we serve families with children birth to age five. Okay. Shortly after that, three years later, we went. I went in and got to experience a second grade teaching position and then first grade. So I've been oh. at the early elementary years as well. Mm -hmm. And then I was there for five years and now I've been back to ECFE for okay. two years. So what's that alignment been for you from ECFE to first grade to second grade? I I'm think sure just knowing what, what happens in yeah, the early yeah. elementary, you know, yeah. we work with the young kids, but then to know the expectations and what okay. the families encounter at that level has actually has held me grown okay. significantly to bring that um, information back to the early That's childhood fantastic. level as well. Fantastic. So tell us about Community Kids Preschool. So Community Kids Preschool, I've been the coordinator for two years, so it's okay. relatively new for me, but it's a collaboration between school readiness and early childhood special ed. Okay, so our, our listeners are saying, what does all of that mean? Right. So, so <laughs> let's break it down for them and explain what each one of those yep, are. Yeah, so it's a preschool opportunity where you have children of varied abilities learning together all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So it's a um, great... Yeah, great place to be with highly qualified staff. All of our staff okay. participate in district staff development and trainings. They're fully licensed through the state of Minnesota. Okay. Um, so they're trained to provide them with their best practices okay. at that level. They, yeah. All right, so here we are this current year. I'm reading this. This says there's been some changes now. I, as the superintendent, I should know what these changes are. <laughs> um, but there's been changes to community kids, uh, preschools. Can you talk to us a little bit about those changes and what's yeah. been going on? So last year, um, changes took place coming into this year. Um, administrative administration decided to make a shift from a special ed model to a general ed model. And okay. what that just means is that their early childhood special ed teachers were feeling overloaded. Yeah, with yeah. having to adopt a new curriculum yep. to do all the assessments and with their caseload of students. So mm -hmm. what they did was they shifted it and now it's more of a general ed model okay. and that really um, has been shown that's a typically inclusive model. It's more often that that's the case than yeah. what we had been doing in the past. So for the best of our students so they could get that Absolutely. best um, experience in preschool is to shift that those numbers. That but we way. know how change affects people. So mm -hmm. how are folks feeling about the change? Be honest with the yeah. folks. <laughs> 
it's, I it's been changed and I think you when you do things for so long we've had a very veteran staff yeah. and they're very great at what they do and yeah. very passionate about what they do right but it's also when you have done something for many years and then telling them to just all of a sudden change it's hard and yes. it's hard for any of us yes. so it has been a trying year but we are constantly doing what's best for the kids and we continuously remind ourselves and each other that we'll get through it and it's just a I, I, I'm glad you said that, Stephanie, because I, I do, I, I really do want our community to know we don't change for change's sake. I mean, we're, we're not here to change. We're trying to do what we think is best practice mm -hmm. for kids. And our little kiddos, we believe this is a, something very important for their successes as yeah. they get ready to move up the, mm -hmm. the, the, the ladder there. So yeah. I, I hear you. It's, trust me when I tell you, <laughs> change is very difficult sometimes. So tell me about preschool standards-wise. Are there standards in preschool? I know the answer to this, mm -hmm. but are there? Yep. And tell me uh, who developed them. Okay, so we have the, in our preschool we um, acknowledge the early childhood indicators of progress and okay. that came from the Minnesota Department of Ed and the Minnesota okay. Department of Human Resources and what it is is just a collaborative effort to okay. show that um, kind of the standard expectations of children at that age mm -hmm. and so between families the early childhood professionals mm -hmm. uh, policymakers the community in general mm -hmm. there are standards that we can live by but to know that it's all a guide and framework mm -hmm. for us to all work together because right. that's really when you have those early learners, we are all working together to process and develop those, you know, healthy, well-functioning children that Absolutely. we want to raise. So this year we have been unpacking standards across our system. Uh, uh, talking about a little bit of change <laughs> for folks, but we have been unpacking all the way through elementary through 12th grade. Have you played a role, uh, preschool played a role in uh, those unpacking standards as well with the rest of the K-12? Yep. yep, and we are so fortunate and K thankful grade. that Good. the district has really oh, kind of wrapped you. their arms around us because, mm -hmm. you know, we've always just kind of been the early childhood and we are part of the process, but we just kind of always done our thing. So right. we've had great, great experience this year for the district to say, yeah, what do you guys need? What can we do to support you in that? And the staff has been great and it's really led to a learning community that they collaboratively and effectively mm -hmm. can use data and process the data, talk about it to maximize that student learning. And that's, you know, I, I, one of the concerns I have is w we are beginning to drop as low with our youngest kids around evaluation, but it is so important when we assess them. And so I, I really do appreciate that you're looking at assessment, mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out how these kids are doing it, because we have to get them ready to read by third grade. So mm -hmm. we have to look at our earliest learners. Right. And so I don't see it any other way that you can be disconnected from kindergarten, first, mm -hmm. second grade, third grade. You have to be an integral part of that. And so it's been exciting to see the alignment of standards yeah. and going, okay, there's preschool, there's yeah. kindergarten. That's what, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you folks, uh, uh, you, the staff has really enjoyed that component. Yeah, I, and it's intimidating to see, do, if we say we're testing preschoolers, we're not testing, we're right. observing preschoolers, right. we're using our findings right. to guide that's a good our point. instruction and our lesson plans. So we're still playing. The kids don't know any different is happening. <laughs> the teachers are just trained in observing and knowing how to take the, those observations and play to guide them to where we need them to go when they transition into kindergarten. So, so like today we have ACT and MCAs going on. They're not doing that. We aren't, we aren't, no. <laughs> okay, that's great, that's great. Okay, so let's talk about this four-star rating that we have in preschool. Uh, which is pretty impressive. It is, yeah. and I, if that's the one thing, like I said, to the board meeting, even coming here, if that's the word that we can get out, that's that was my purpose, is we are a four-star rated program, so really it's hard, I mean, it's nice to say we're one of the best. I mm -hmm. mean, that's the highest rating that we can possibly get, and what that means for families is that mm -hmm. we are, we're a high-quality preschool program that is trained and ready to get your child ready for a successful transition into kindergarten. But the most important part is, is it gives us the opportunity to award early learning scholarships yeah. to eligible families. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, um, those scholarships, each student that qualifies can get up to $5,000 to use towards their um, early education Tuition. of their choice until they enter kindergarten. Okay. And so they can use that money out at Community Kids Preschool wow. and attend at no charge. So four stars across our community. We have a lot of uh, folks in preschool around mm -hmm. our area. How many folks, how many uh, preschool programs have a four star? Do There's you have two of us. Two? Winona State has a four star programming and then Community Kids Preschool. Okay, and Winona mm -hmm. State is housed in our buildings as well. Right, right. Okay. yep, and they offer, I believe, some of the wraparound care and okay. stuff. Okay, well that's good. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this uh, early uh, learning scholarship. 
So how do parents access this? Do they have to hit a threshold? Do they have to fill out paperwork? How does that work? It's, a, it's for in, income eligible families and those guidelines are posted on our community preschools tab which is located th within the district website. Mm -hmm. So if you go to uh, winona.k12.mn.us and to the community tabs, that's all laid out. Otherwise, simply contact myself okay. out at the early education Excellent. offices and that's 494 and I'll, again. Yeah, 494 <laughs> We and love you. Yeah, I, I will sit down and we'll fill out the paperwork together. It's not a, a daunting application process okay. at all. Excellent. Um, so we'll do it and we'll get it sent in and get you into the preschool as soon that's, as possible. That's wonderful. Well, I know we're down here. Did, see how mm -hmm. quick this goes? I know. It's pretty quick. You already gave me the five minute thing here. There's a couple questions I have and then at the end I'd like to have you, if there's anything you want to share with our community. So is there a curriculum around preschool? We have adopted the creative curriculum and that was part of getting our parent aware rating okay. for our four stars okay. that we had to um, adopt some sort. We've chosen the creative curriculum. It aligns very well with the Winona Area Public Schools goals and as long and as well as the early childhood indicators of progress. Excellent. So it's all research based and it promotes the exploration um, and discovery. So you're building you know, the confidence uh, and the critical thinking and the creativity yes. just built right into that natural play that happens Absolutely. in the preschool. Wonderful. Last question I have for you, uh, Stephanie, is changes happening next year? You know? We are. So okay. through our professional learning communities that again the district has graciously allowed us to participate in. Oh, she's been in. very nice to I me know. right here. <laughs> <is> very good. <laughs> but our teachers were struggling with um, how to differentiate, how to get those little ones that just turned three and the ones yes. that are going to kindergarten. There's a lot of learning that's happening in our little brains that we're serving and so they were struggling constantly to you know adapt those. So we are going to use that um, those findings and move forward into age-focused classrooms. So next oh. year we have a Bright Beginnings program and a smart start program and so we'll have a three-year-old classroom and four-year-old classroom offerings separate, separate. Uh -huh. so we offer two-day programming three-day programming and then intensive five-day programming for yes. those that are entering kindergarten so we're using our findings we're gonna give them the best um, do families really like the five-day program or? we filled within a day of opening our slots this year Is so I mean yeah like that, it huh? did it, we blinked and it happened and we smiled and said oh no <laughs> <Not much." laughs> so but it's good it's really? uh, it's wow. good I mean so it's showing yes yeah. Families are investing in that early learning and they're understanding the importance of how that's happening. So three day, four day, and then there's two day, three, three day, day, and, and five day. intensive five mm -hmm. day. For three and so and parents three still get the choice of what they yeah. like to see for their kids. Yep, absolutely. Wow, it's amazing. Well, we're down to the last few minutes okay. of this first segment. Stephanie, anything you want to let the community know? I mean, you guys do amazing work over we there. We do, and I think sometimes being out in Goodview, we're a little lost out there. People maybe don't see a big road sign as they drive by our school, mm -hmm. but we're out there. Come visit us. There's so much happening in those classrooms every time I walk through them I see just so much nurturance and engagement mm -hmm. and the teachers are constantly at the kids level and the kids are smiling they're having a great time so I, I, I just have this to say as I close out is you know I've watched the state legislature and how much the governor is putting the focus on early childhood and some of these programs and to be able to come as a new superintendent to our school system to see the kind of in-depth preschool programming we already have in yeah. place there are school districts that don't have what we have, and we're, we, we are truly blessed. And I mean, be it Winona State, be it us, be it other schools around us. But I, I just want to thank you and the rest of the team because it makes my job really easy. <laughs> that Because that's our foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of folks, if we don't take care of it on the front end, we'll spend a lot of money on the, the back end right. when kids are behind the eight ball. And, the achievement gap is wide. So a lot of the work is going towards you guys to say, hey, how do we narrow this achievement gap? And so I thank you for that. Um, I'm just overwhelmed actually as, a, as, a, as a, the superintendent when I see this type of, these type of programs, when I have these type of people sit here across from me uh, leading the way here. My job, it's so easy when I have talent. And so I just wanted to thank Stephanie and the team again mm -hmm. for the work. Uh, I know you're right about Goodview. You can drive by Goodview and be like, what's happening over there? But there are some amazing things. And if you, if you don't believe me, go out and take a look at that. Uh, I thank you, Stephanie, again for coming. Uh, we'll be back in a moment after this break to making a grade. Robeson Family Vision Center is always changing, continuing to provide you with the latest technology. Today, we're changing our logo from Robeson Family Vision Center to Vision Source. Vision Source is North America's premier network of private practice optometrists. We've been a member of Vision Source since 2006. Robeson Family Vision Center is proud to be Winona's Vision Source. 
And remember, at Robeson Family Vision Center, we make the time to answer your questions. At HBC, we strive to be the leader in internet, video, phone, and more. A visionary in residential and business fiber optic networks. HBC is growing Minnesota broadband by providing unparalleled local personal care from your friends and neighbors. We know it's often the little details. That's why HBC is committed to being attentive in all facets of our business with a very strong emphasis on customer service. Call 888-474-9995 and start experiencing the HBC difference. Well, welcome back to Making a Grade. I'm Stephen West, uh, a superintendent of Winona Area Public Schools. And next to me now for the second segment is Chris Dalkey. How are you? Just fine, thank you. Excellent. Hey, we're going to, uh, Chris is actually the Winona Adult Literacy Coordinator, mm -hmm. which is a fancy name. Yes, it is. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what this, this title entails? Well, the Adult Literacy uh, covers uh, GED, ESL, and now we have a, a college uh, preparation program that we're, we're trying to initiate right now. Okay. So it covers all those classes and those services for the adults in our community. Uh, to get whatever kind of education that they, they, they need, whether again just learning English okay. or if they need to get a GED or both or okay. and now hopefully if they're thinking about going back to college we can hopefully get them started on that road. So I, before we go off the, the, the script here, I really do want to talk a little bit about this because we do have um, a need for these folks to really get these GEDs and and to take the next step to where they go. How is it a big group of folks that we deal with in our community, or do they access us well? Or we, uh, you know, it's it's probably not a, a, a large group, but it is a it's a, a, a very a group that does need that those services. Right. And you know, these are usually um, folks who have had a hard time in school in the past right. and maybe having some, some difficulties in their life. So hmm. um, for many of them, the, the desire is there, but not it, sometimes it's, it's difficult for them to, to follow through because right. of life. Right. And we try to do whatever we can to help them along the way, not just give them the academic skills, but try to help them you know, find, figure out ways to, to deal with those life issues sure. that can help them uh, fulfill their educational desires. So what does that look like for uh, a person? So I come in and I mm -hmm. really want to get a GED or mm -hmm. whatnot. Tell me what that entails. How does Chris help me? Well, we, we have you come in uh, at the start of one of our, our we call them sessions. We have okay. about six week sessions, okay. our classes last. And we, we begin with an orientation. We talk about the entire program, um, you know, try to give them a realistic idea of what it's going to take to get there. Right. And then included in that is we, we do use standardized tests to uh -huh. basically diagnose where they're at, where their deficiencies might be, okay. and to then basically use that to provide an educational plan for them that's yeah. going to meet their, their end goals. Okay, so what type of assessments do you use to, to set that baseline, I assume, um, uh, to meet those folks where mm -hmm. they are at? Uh, the state of Minnesota, the Department of Education has, has determined that um, the, the TABE test, they have yeah. a, a um, TABE test that they use for the, the ABE and GED services, and they also mm -hmm. have a CASAS test for the ESL classes. And so those are state mandated, and we use those not only to see where they're at when they come in, but we also use that when they're done to see hopefully how far they've progressed. Absolutely. So we're going to continue with this conversation, but let's let the community know who you are okay. and how long have you been in this position, that type of thing. So who are you, Chris? Who, who's working for WAPS here at Community sure. Ed? And Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well I've been uh, the, the director now for the coordinator for about a little over two and a half years. Okay. Um, my wife and I have, we've lived here uh, just over 13 years. Okay. Um, we have uh, three children. We have one at the middle school, one at Madison, and then we have a four-year-old who will be starting um, in 2016 at one of the, the kindergartens in the, in yeah, the district. Excellent. So you're uh, keeping it in the house. That's yes, good. Oh, yes. That's good. Yep, yep. That's important. And um, my wife is the children's librarian at the Winona Public Library, so oh, many, right. many of the viewers may know her from, from there. Okay. Um, and besides, you know, trying to keep in, you know, following the kids around and everything that they're doing, that, that pretty much keeps me busy so outside absolutely. of school. Absolutely. Okay, so we, we have, like I said before in the first segment, we have quality people in our system doing great jobs. So let's go back to this adult literacy piece. So 
adult basic ed is a part of that the GED mm -hmm. what else are those the two main pieces yeah uh, and then ESL so ESL yep, okay. so the yep. GED and ABE kind of sometimes go together yeah, because yep. um, an adult may have their diploma but they want to brush up on math either to get into college yeah, or they absolutely. just want to or maybe they want to help their, their child with their homework they okay. have forgot what what some of that is okay um, so and then the ESL would certainly be the other larger um, okay. portion of the program do you get a, a I mean I'm thinking Winona but is there a big ESL uh, push um, for us? There is, I mean, I think about, you know, I think that's around 5% of the overall county population yep, that, yep. that may not have English as their first language. language. Right. So, um, and, you know, a lot of them, um, you know, have jobs, and so, you know, we're, we're trying to have classes when we can that could, you know, fit into to their schedule so they can maintain, you know, their work, but also then you know, get those English skills so maybe they can progress even more at their at their jobs. Now, is this a lot of work done online? Is this work done in traditional textbooks? I mean, what do we do? Both. Yep. Okay, so it's a hybrid of sorts. Yes, okay. we we have plenty of stuff that we can do traditionally with paper and pencil books right. and right. so forth. But we also have access through the state of Minnesota uh, to certain online programs that really do that allow students to work outside of class and mm -hmm. in class online. So that um, you know, computer literacy is one of the areas that that we have adopted. Um, uh, state level for our, our adult learners so Wonderful. that they they really are, are gonna be ready for whether it's school or or jobs and that are out there they need to have that computer literacy so we are we're working in, in implementing that in all of our programs Excellent. Uh, to make sure that when they that next step they at least have the basics and are comfortable with a computer and can move forward Excellent. So, how do people get enrolled in this? Well, they can call uh, Community Ed at uh, 494-0900. You can look at them and say it again. To yes, <laughs> you can call Community Education at 494-0900, and you can get information there. We also have information on our website, uh, which you can find under the Community Ed links on the, the WAPS uh, website. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, let me stop you in the first segment. I was asking about WAPS and WAPS. So I just heard you say WAPS. Yes. Uh, I don't know which way to go, community. So is is that how you sound? That's how I say it. I, I may be wrong. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't, don't feel bad. I'm, I'm hearing different things here. So this time around, we'll go with WAPS okay. for this segment here. So WAPS, okay. okay? Yep. Okay. So where are the classes offered? Uh, we we actually have two different classrooms. We we have classrooms at the Winona Area Learning Center, and that's where primarily our ESL and our GED classes are okay. and then we also have a partnership with uh, Southeast Technical and we have a classroom over there room 311 that we um, are, are using now and we plan to use more in the future Excellent. and so we have we have access there obviously to the programs at Southeast Tech at least getting students uh, information on those programs and also with the workforce center there we, we have you know all three of us working together for students to hopefully um, get them a job get them in a program a degree of some sort right. um, and but also like I said we also have the option at the at the area learning center if, if that is a, a closer or more viable option for students. So you might know this, you might not know it, but what is the demo? Do you have an idea of demographic breakdowns of our students there in the program? I, you know, I don't off the top of my okay. head. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 don't apologize. Don't apologize. Anything new on the horizon? Yes. Okay. Um, as part of, um, and I think many of you, if you've been, you know, reading the local newspaper and finding. Um, You've been hearing a lot about this either developmental or remedial classes that a lot of students end yes. up having to take as they get into college, and that is, is in many ways detrimental to some of them. And so we've started a, a, a college success initiative, CSI, and we are, we're hopeful. That's pretty creative. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right. I figured it'd be catchy enough people would <laughs> yeah, recognize that's it. that's pretty creative. Okay. And, um, and so in conjunction with uh, Southeast Tech, we're able to offer yes. um, beginning courses in English and math, that Southeast Tech will recognize, if our students are successful in these classes, Southeast Tech will recognize that and allow them to register for the next class in that series. And our classes are free, so in, in many ways for you know, students in the old days, they may have to take three of those classes before they have to take the one that's actually mandatory for their program. Mm -hmm. And at least we're, we're hopeful that we can at least offer them those beginning classes for free to get them started, get them some success, and maybe even get them above some of the other classes by the time that they're done. Okay. So CSI, tell me uh, dates, time. Yes. Well, we have um, a reading and writing class that's going to begin on May 18th, okay. and that's going to run on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays from uh, 1.30 to 3.30, and that's at Southeast Tech, room 311. Okay. And then the next week, we'll be starting a math class that begins, uh, that's May 26th through July 2nd, 
and that's on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays from 11.30 to 1.30. Um, and eventually in September we're going to be offering a GED class at Southeast Tech that'll be very geared towards uh, with workforce and Southeast Tech to get them not only the GED but you know really get them excited and moving towards a career straight from there. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to try to do in the summertime is, is offer an AccuPlace or prep class. Oh, that's so so that's students cool. that are just newly graduated or if they are thinking about going back to school they will have the opportunity to, to take a, a, a six to eight week course um, that you know really looks at the math, looks at the English, looks at test taking skills and yeah. strategies so that when and when they go to take that AccuPlacer test whether it's at Southeast Tech or another Minsky school um, they're hopefully very prepared and will you know maybe test out of all those those developmental classes I mean that'd be the, the ultimate goal but if they can test out of one or two of them save themselves some money, money. Yep. and and start successfully that's that's the ultimate goal and the AccuPlacer prep will start on July 7th and you can get all, all this information is on our website and, and you can always feel f uh, free to call Community Ed. We have all the information there if you have other questions. You know, Chris, as we close out uh, this segment, um, I just had Stephanie on the first segment and we talked about reaching the, the, the earliest learners so that we can get them reading and writing by third grade. And, and now on the back end of that, now we're talking about a group of folks who I would call at risk mm -hmm. uh, of not uh, getting their diplomas and whatnot and how important it is to continue to try to reach that entire uh, the entire spectrum of learner and I, I can't thank you guys enough for the work that you're doing uh, I know Margaret Shields over there yourself and mm -hmm. you know you guys are doing some amazing things here to make sure that we give an individual every opportunity yep. to get that diploma mm -hmm. and uh, and we're really serious out there. If you're out there and you, you're thinking about coming back, come on in and, and let us uh, help you with that and, and work through that. Just amazing. It really does go to the whole list. I, I've been really blessed to be the superintendent here in Winona because I see high quality work across the spectrum. So thank you for that. You. Um, here I am at the end of my, uh, our, uh, our making a grade and uh, I, I have to tell you, uh, community, I, I've, I've been dealing with allergies, so I'm off my game a little bit on this and uh, uh, stuffy and whatnot, so forgive me if I've been choppy today. Um, but uh, I couldn't uh, thank uh, our folks any more than I do and just so appreciate you guys, so appreciate the work. Uh, that will end the segment on Making a Grade. I thank you very much as Superintendent of Schools, and we'll see you next time on Making a Grade. Mm -hmm.